welcome back to my channel. This is Heike and you're watching Stone Cold Coffee Crafts and today I have an episode of Floss Tube for you, which I didn't think I would make today, quite honestly. But I just have a little bit of time to squeeze it in, so... <laughs> How have you been? It's been over two weeks since I have recorded anything. And I've really, really missed it. And actually today was supposed to be my big day back. And ooh, we are going back to business as usual. But I don't think that is going to happen quite yet. Um, I don't know how much you have followed me the last two weeks um, here on YouTube and a little bit on Instagram. I don't think I have spoken about it on Instagram a lot. But right in time for my vacation, two days before vacation, the boyfriend got sick. We did the whole spiel. Hi, Lola, baby. Um, including Corona tests and all, which was negative. But um, he has not been well. So basically he started out with what felt like a flu, which is why the doctor did the test. The test came back negative thank goodness but he actually had a summer cold so he was down for most of the week with that he has been having some issues for the last year um, which is as of yet undiagnosed and um, it has to do with his breathing so that aggravated got aggravated by the cold quite a bit um, which is why it probably took longer he still has some issues there and um, from the cold he went, went straight into having stomach pains, stomach cramps. Um, basically, it was, it was a nightmare. And towards the end of last week he finally got his butt to our doctor again. And she is now pretty certain that the second issue he developed in week two is an infected gallbladder. Um, and he is on stick leave still, <laughs> week three, <laughs> yay. Well, actually the last two weeks for him were vacation too, but um, he was sick the whole time, so we did nothing, we went nowhere. <laughs> Everything, erp. <laughs> well, this one here was happy because I was around all the time doing all the cuddling. Anyway. Um, this is a long prelude to telling you that I have no idea how many videos I'm going to do this week. Um, I have this one for sure. I just found a super old unboxing I filmed of the last beatbox I got. And uh, normally I think I would not have uploaded the, this, but I think I'm going to prepare that for one day this week. Um... And then as far as, as videos I still have for rainy day, I still have a couple of Diamond Art Club unboxings from February, March, somewhere around there. Um, I'm not sure. I might keep it to the two videos and just hope that you will come back next week. And <laughs> next week will be better and finally have some new videos. Kitty, you look dandruffy. What's up? But let's not procrastinate any further. Let's do the floss tube thing, shall we? I did not stitch as much as I had hoped to do in my two weeks of vacation for reasons just mentioned. Um, but I did stitch a bit. And yeah, let's get into that, shall we? I have no finishes or fully finished objects. I still have not finished my Barbara Anna and I really need to do that. I have everything here now. No more excuses. I just never feel like it, which is so weird because I want to see that thing done. But I have a couple of new starts. And I'm going to, yeah, hi. I'm going to show you those. The first one is, going to push the kitty a bit back. The first one is um, The 12 Days of Christmas by Little House Needleworks. Um, I started on the text part. Thank you, Kitty. And yeah, that's how far I got in one sitting and afterwards I haven't picked it up yet. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the colors. I'm doing this for my mother-in-law. It's supposed to be either her Christmas or birthday present for her. That's the same day she can uh, pick, which she would 
prefer birthday or Christmas I don't care <laughs> but it's for one of those and um, I picked a pattern which I thought would fit her well which basically means it doesn't fit me very well <laughs> I don't like all these muted colors so this is pretty much um, the colors you see here are very muted, um, olivey greens, these goldish browns, the darkish reds. That's what, what's going on in this piece and um, yeah, it's, it doesn't exactly scream my name. But um, I think I just have to get in the mood a little bit and then it is going to be a nice stitch, and a relaxing stitch. Um, I'm stitching this on 28 count, I think this is summer khaki linen. It is the called for linen, and I believe that's summer khaki. I'm not entirely sure. I should have looked that up, but as always, I'm prepared. <laughs> Today, at least, I have an excuse for that. Um, and yeah, 28 count is, some call it um, a floss grave, because you <laughs> use a lot of floss and you stitch, obviously, with two um, strands of thread. But um, I like it. It's apart from 36, my other favorite count so yep digging it and I need to to get back to it but first I need to uh, let's put that over there I need to get back to my other new start which is the dark queen of the sea stitch along by autumn lane stitchery it is going to be fantastic. It is a mystery stitch along, so we know nothing of it except for the first part that released on September 1st, but it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> there is just no way around it. Um, so I made a start. I stitched the first of the three fish that make up the first part. I'm going to put the pictures always there on the left. Um, I'm going to go back to this this afternoon. So basically this dropped on the 1st. I started stitching on it on the 2nd of September and I finished the fish on the 3rd and then decided to take a break and put it away because I had put in a lot of stitching between the 31st and the 3rd of September. I caught up on, on two stitch alongs and started this one. So. I decided I needed a bit of a break from stitching and put it down for that reason. But I'm going to put it back up and I'm going to put in the two other fish. I don't know how long it's going to take me. These fish are really deceptive. Um, so it might take me two to three days probably before I have them done. And then I'm going to go back to the 12 days of Christmas before the next round of stitch along pattern drops. I have no idea what the cat did there, but it set my headset off. Oh, she's very tech savvy. Yeah, but anyways, that's the, the plan. And this fantastic fabric is the called for fabric for this stitch along. It has been dyed by under the sea fabrics, especially for this stitch along. I think you can still buy it um, and you can buy it in in a package with um, all the beads you are going to need for this piece and also with the special floss if you want to. There is um, a couple of, of treasure braids in here. And as always, because I am just that type of person, I went with the opalescent version and this is once again a 28 count linen. It is such a beautiful piece of linen. Um, I only have a small piece here visible, but it's it's so, so pretty. And the cat is going to do something again. My work laptop is up there because um, actually I am supposed to be still on the clock. Of course, I'm on, on um, break right now for obvious reasons, but I have the computer still running and she is going to kill it. I just know it. Yeah, so these are my two new starts. And the Dark Queen of the Sea stitch along is going to run for 12 months. So we will see quite a bit of that. I plan to keep caught up on that. And then I have a couple of whips we are going to talk about. First up is the Midnight Way. Why do you blow out? It was perfect for a few seconds there. The Midnight Way Halloween stitch along by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Um, in my last floss tube I showed you Broomhilda's shop and on um, August 31st the Cats and Bats pet shop dropped and yeah 
this bow is so cute. The first one took me a while, and these parts are actually pretty big, they are pretty deceptive, but the Cats and Bats shop, that was just my jam. I stitched this in two days. I started it on the 31st and finished it on the 1st of September. Um, I made a couple of changes. Um, the door is actually supposed to be stitched in the same two oranges the cat is. Um, I accidentally switched the oranges around, that was not my intention, but the door is actually supposed to be stitched in the lighter or orange and then what I did in the black treasure braid, the lines, they are supposed to be in the darker orange. I am not a huge fan of using these two oranges together because there is basically no contrast there. And um, the bat was actually charted to be stitched in treasure braid, so I decided I would like it much more if the door had more contrast. I picked out the second orange again and restitched it with the treasure braid. I like that much more. The same thing with the bow tie on the big cat hat. Um, it was charted in these two oranges. There's basically no contrast, so I decided to put these big axes with just one thread of black over the knot of the bow tie. Um, and last but not least, but I'm doing this on the whole piece, so that's nothing new. I am stitching all the back stitching except for the mouth of the pumpkin and Hilda. I hadn't decided yet to do just one strand. I am stitching all the back stitching with just one um, strand of thread. Frosted pumpkin calls for two, but this is just too too thick for me. I never like it. On all my frosted pumpkin um, pieces, the one thing I never liked was the, was the back stitch. And um, I decided when I stitched the Broomhildas in the sign on her shop that I was not going to try this time to do it with two strands because it's just going to look ugly and bulky. So there we are. Uh, the next part for this is Shadow to Drop on the 14th, so one week today. And this is going to be the third shop that goes here on the left and then only one part is left. Um, which is going to be the long stripe that is going to be underneath all the three shops down here. And then this piece is done. It's super cute. I just love Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. They are pretty much the company that brought me back into stitching and um, I just love what they do. And of course, you know what comes next, right? September 1st. Santa's Trip, Stitch Along by Barbara Anna, and the middle block dropped. I had hoped for some kind of Christmas tree and I guess that's what I got. <laughs> it's more of a Christmas garland, um, but I like this part. It's, it's very, 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 very cute. I like her Mr. and Mrs. Santa couple pieces very much, so that's fantastic. I decided, since I have been replacing um, stitches for beads on every single part so far that I was going to do the star in the gold beads and that's what it looks like. Right now I'm not entirely happy with it. Um, I have posted this today on my Instagram and have explained. Um, I know it's part of the primitive and, and simple look that things are not exactly always centered but I have been thinking to move the string of the star a half stitch to the right and the star a full stitch to the right to center the string in their hands because right now it looks like the string uh, goes through his wrist <laughs> and the star um, is attached to the, to the string on the side which would actually make it hang wonky and it's just something that annoys me. I know I shouldn't logic with my cross stitch piece but for whatever reason this little detail annoys me so much so I'm thinking about uh, fixing that. I haven't decided yet and I, I decided to put it away until the next part drops and then revisit it and see if it still bothers me or not. So this is not going to be touched at the moment. Yeah, but this is the fifth part now. There are only four more parts. The next one will drop on the 15th. 
um, together with the next Chinese zodiac. So middle of September is going to be really busy and that brings us, in, us into plans. So right now the plan is pretty much to stay on top of the stitch alongs. I have less stitch alongs than other people I follow on Flosstube, but I have more than enough right now. Um, it's so many that even the few I have started and am staying on top on are taking up a lot of my stitchy time each month, which is alright because I like all of them or I wouldn't try to stay on top of them. But I really can't take on any more right now. So the plan until you come and visit me with, with, with words, visit with me for the next time for a proper floss tube is to finish the Dark Queen of the Sea part one. This should be possible. Then I plan to stitch a few days on the 12 days of Christmas. Um, I hope I will get a good three days into that and get a chunk of it done. And then I will probably go back to the Midnight Way because then the third part of that should drop. And the next day I'm going to get the Chinese Zodiac and the sixth part of the center strip. And that will probably keep me occupied, I would say, at least until next floss tube. I, I'm currently calculating that I'm going to need three, two to three days for the Midnight Way. I'm going to need at least two days for the Chinese Zodiac. It's going to be a bit of a bigger piece because we are going to get the next corner piece with the fan and everything. So that's a bit more stitching. Um, and it's hitting in the middle of the week this time. So we will see. And um, yeah, the Barbara Anna is quick. Um, these little blocks stitch up super quick. I usually manage to do them in one sitting. So I'm currently calculating six to seven days. So <laughs> let's hope, let's hope that that works out. And once those are done, it is all 12 days of Christmas until the end of the month. I don't think that it will be enough to have a finish because that's something like, what did I say, 8,000 stitches or something like that. Um, I did the math, so it's it's a bit of stitching. <laughs> so it will, it will take a hot minute. Mm. Taking a sip of coffee before it gets cold. But anyway, we have a bit of haul. And I'm going to cut this short today, I think. I'm just going to do the haul and then that's it. And it's probably one of my shorter floss tubes. But um, I don't have a whole lot of time. And, and like I said, I am officially still on the clock. So I shouldn't extend this break too long. So um, I made a few spontaneous purchases on Chromatic Alchemy. And she has now as of September 1st, switched back to dye fabric um, by order. So she, she had stopped this at the beginning of the year because she um, moved out of her house into her own apartment and had to figure out her whole living situation, dyeing situation, and then Corona and all that fun. So she basically stopped because of living and private situation and then extended because of all the rest to September 1st. Um, she only offered ready to ship stuff, which was basically what she felt like in the sizes she felt like in the fabric she felt like, you get my drift. And um, now as of September 1st, she has her whole catalog back, or I don't know if it's still the same she had before because I, I literally put my first chromatic alchemy die to order order in a couple of days before she shut it down. So <laughs> I have no idea if she has um, reduced her catalog or whatever, but it is back. You can now once again order fabric from her um, in the color, in the size you like. She's only offering, I've seen that, she's only offering 28 count and 32 count as far as even weave and linen goes. and. I guess she also offers Ada. I don't I don't ever check Ada because I don't stitch on it any longer. Um, I don't know why, but I, I, I really, I used to like it a lot, but since I've started stitching on linen, I just don't want to go back to Ada anymore. 
um, the fabric is too clunky for me now, which is kind of sad because I have quite a few pretty pieces of Ada, but that's just life. But long story long, I um, made a couple of purchases because she had updated her ready to ship section once again. And that was actually on the last days of August. And the first piece I ordered is this, um, she just calls it L2 because I think this is just um, a one of a kind piece she's not going to bring back. It is a 28 count linen, 13 by 18 inches and it is an opalescent. It is this beautiful soft purple blue gray tones. It is gorgeous. If this was a permanent fabric she had in all the sizes, I would probably buy it all the time because it's fantastic. And I think most colors will actually shine on this. Um, super pretty. And then she had also a piece of this, um, which she called L4. It is this um, very muted greens with the, with the light splotches. It is once again 28 count linen also opalescent and this is a 12 by 18 so slightly smaller than the other piece and while I was there I checked her um, section for accessories and she had bowen needles and I love those needles but I it's really hard to get them right now um, <laughs> literally no shop that usually stocks them has them right now so she had them in either big quantities or in these little in these little um packages here but those are usually also sold out so i thought well, you know what you can never have too many needles i i went and bought 25 of them <laughs> it's not a useless purchase is it and then because this is something I want to do with Rachel as soon as possible, whatever that means in stitchy terms. Um, I've showed you the pattern before. We got this when it was released at market. It is the Friendship Sampler, the collaboration between Michelle Bendy Stitchy and Janine from The Blue Flower. And we are going to stitch this together. We are going to stitch... No, we are not going to eat it. We are going to stitch this upper part ourselves and then we are going to send it to the other and the other will stitch this part um yeah for the other person so i'm going to stitch this part on rachel's piece for rachel and she's going to stitch it for me on my piece i have of course once again doubted my fabric choice so i have another piece of fabric on the way that could be a good fit for this we will see but I have finally now fully kitted this up. So this is all the floss that goes into this piece. It is a mixture of Gentle Arts, Classic Color Works and Weeks Dye Works. And these colors are just amazing. I have to say, Fancy Floss is expensive, but I love it so much. It is just so beautiful. And I still love DMC, don't get me wrong. But just the slightest variegation is sometimes the one thing your piece needs to just be perfect. So yeah, she's not just a fabric snob, she's also a thread snob now. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually loving all the flosses. So that's what I got. And then while stitching on the um, frosted pumpkin, <laughs> Rachel noted how differently we stitch on things. So she is completely stitching her piece different from what I do. Um, I don't have a lot of issues counting on linen. I hardly ever miscount and have to frog afterwards, but I know that not everyone has it that easy on linen. So what I often do is I will color complete and um, that sometimes involves a lot of counting. And I think that, that she goes more in, in sections. I don't know. But we, uh, <laughs> over this conversation, we decided that it would be interesting to um, start a piece together, all three of us, Rachel, Jesse from Miss Late Pages and myself, and see how differently we stitch on this thing. And we decided that one of the Plum Street, Plum Street Sampler 
stack patterns would be a good choice for that. Um, we decided on Fox View because that was actually one I could easily get and I think Rachel and Jesse both already had it. So I got my pattern. I got it from Arts and Design in Wales, as I like to do. And I also got nearly all of the floss. So this is once again a mixture of Weeks Dye Works and Classic Color Works. And I got all except, except one. I'm missing the pine needles. I think that's a classic color work I'm missing here. But Rachel got that for all three of us because we were all three missing this floss. So she has ordered that now. I have no idea, Rachel, where you did order that anymore. <laughs> My brain, it doesn't want to cooperate. But um, yeah, that's going to be another stitch along because we need all the stitch alongs, right? <laughs> And the rest is going to be, well, let's, let's go for the kit. Remember the Stacy Yakula Christmas stocking I was talking about? Um, that had artwork of an artist I have loved since I did stamping and I have a ton of her art as stamps. Um, Stacy Yakula is her name. Well, she did not only license some of her artwork for that stocking, there was also a set of Christmas ornaments and um, that's what it looks like. Ooh, Claire, so much Claire. Um, I think last time I mentioned that I had gotten this. I thought I, I had but I didn't realize. <laughs> I bought it on Amazon, Amazon UK and I got a notification a couple of days after I bought it and I really thought it was a shipping notification. I did not realize it was not, that the seller had sent me a message. And um, I think about a month later, I wondered where the package was and looked back in this email I got and then realized, oh, they did not send it out. They canceled the order. All right, not good. So I did the second best thing. I went on eBay and I found this on eBay for an okay price. It basically was the same price I paid on Amazon. I think I paid like two or three euros more. Um, but that was fine because this kit is discontinued. And yeah, that arrived pretty quickly. And these are so cute. I just love Stacey Akula. It's the same mess as you always have with the Dimension kits. It came with an ice blue Ada. Um, I'm not interested in that. It's not going to be stitched on Ada if I stitch it and they use their own floss. There are DMC conversions. They are not 100% correct, I noticed with the last one. Um, but um, they are okay-ish. If you would like to re-stitch it, it should be fine. I mostly bought it for the, for the patterns, to be honest. So, Christmas ornaments! <laughs> And last but not least, we have a few patterns. One I've been looking at since the beginning of the year. Halloween Quaker by Lila Studio. This thing is giant. It is really, really giant. But I've been longingly looking at it since I saw it on Michelle Bendy's channel for the first time. She's right now, um, I think, stitching on it. Or she has stitched on it a few days ago. And um, probably she will be back to it, hopefully, sometime this month. Because it's it's just such a beautiful piece and I love to see it grow. Um, but I also love that you can take the... The, um, uh, the ornaments... Whatever. That you can... Modi motifs. Motifs. That you can... The single motifs. Take them out and just stitch them as they are. I love this spider motif. I love this cat motif. It's just so cute. But I plan to stitch this as a full Quaker. Not this year, but who knows? Maybe next year. And while I was at it, the shop helpfully showed me this. So this is Nevermore, also by Lila Studio. And I just adore it. I love these borders. They are so, so amazing. Never show a person who loves to stitch borders, borders like this. It's just... <laughs> yeah. Hopeless. 
because I never can say no when it comes to Halloween. We have a couple of more. We have Haunted by Misty Purcell. Um, again, ornaments, this time Halloween. This is a bit bigger than an ornament. Um, and this one here I have been looking at since I bought the Midnight Ride. I think it's the Midnight... No, Midnight Watch. Midnight Watch. The Kitty um, is the Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. It is just so gorgeous. And I'm a border girl. I am looking forward to stitching this border. I've heard so many people who have stitched this complain about the border. <laughs> and I'm the weirdo who sees that and thinks, wow, that border. <laughs> I need to stitch this. So yeah, these were my pattern purchases for the last two weeks. Uh, I needed exactly none of them, but yeah. Oh, and this is a... A free pattern you get when you order from arts and designs usually they throw a free pattern in there I think it's their own design it's usually flowers or stuff like that um, yeah I keep them I don't know if I ever stitch them but why throw them out right and I think that is it did I purchase anything digital I don't think so no I don't think so yeah that's it guys so yay, I managed to get a floss tube in after all. I'm going to try and, and do videos this week, but I'm not going to promise anything because like I said, um, boyfriend's still sick at home. I'm back to work this week. Basically what that means is um, I'm working all the chores at home. Am I now because poor little boy's sick? <sighs> I know, I know bad girlfriend but he's going on my nerves right now to be honest um usually we we get along very well also if we are in each other's space all the time for a couple of weeks but every time he gets sick he is not he's not the whiny type but but he's just always in the way I don't know how he manages that he's always in the way he's basically my third cat because cats they are always where you need to step next <laughs> that's where they are sitting and looking at you judgingly and he is not looking judgingly but he's always where you need to step next <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for him to go back to work I really am so I hope when this week is over that he will feel better again and will go back to work or I might kill him. <laughs> That's how it goes. Anyway guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope I will have a couple of more videos. If not, please forgive me. Next week I should be back or I'm going to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> That's the two alternatives here. And yeah, have a wonderful week. And if I don't talk to you sooner, until next Monday. Bye, guys.